Yeah, so as you can see, we are now streaming to YouTube using Zoom. Is it, is it okay? Let me see, uh, where's the link? Copy streaming link. Okay, see then, so. Yep, streaming is working. I think you need to use all. YouTube. YouTube. Now, yeah, post. So, I'll uh, post that link to Meetup. Yeah, I hope my next cloud server don't crash on me. Ha ha. Hello, Max. Hey, man. Let me see who else is there. I should do the. Let's see gallery view. Is everyone? How do we? You hide the. How do we see the other screens? Uh? Oh, show non video. Mm. Okay. Oh, most of the. Hello, everyone. Wow, all on mute. Max, you are on mute too. Yo, I'm here. Okay. Okay, I think we can, we'll wait another five more minutes before we start. So, um, anyone else want to say something? Just say hi. A quick chit chat before we start. There. Mm. So we are also streaming live on uh, YouTube. Yeah, I'm monitoring Meetup and others. Okay. Telegram. See what. So see my my video is Max. You can see my video is pausing. Yeah, I can see that. It's because once it's streaming to live to YouTube, my laptop cannot handle. It's a very old laptop. Probably need to buy a new one from Gim Dong. Yeah, he's a IBM <laughs> guy, right? Lenovo guy. Yes. Lenovo guy. Yeah. Okay, so a uh, public announcement. So anyone wants to uh, buy a Lenovo laptop, we can look for our friend here, Ching Gim Leong. Gim Leong, what's the price of a X1 Nano? You are muted. <laughs> I don't know whether he's still uh, there or seen. in uh, Yeah, he could be still. Walking around. Yeah. So Max, Max can start at 8.10. Yeah. So Max, uh, you're doing your work now in the kitchen, I see. Well, kitchen slash living room. So wow. <laughs> have you, has your girlfriend gotten back the result? Um. I don't think so. I think it's going to be in tomorrow, tomorrow okay. morning. So my wife went for a swap test the day before yesterday. Mm. So yesterday she got a result negative. That's good. Yeah. So it took about, I think you, you uh, 24 hours for the test result to come back. Have you, have you had one test before Daryl? No. <laughs> yeah, I had the pleasure one. of getting one. I had one tested several months ago for the NCID uh, research uh, project. So this is where I'm uh, wearing one of the uh, gadgets to monitor my daily temp hourly temperature for NCID. So I had a blood test uh, for COVID yeah, several months ago and it was uh, negative. So mine wasn't a swap, mine was a blood test. They took a whole oh, yeah. uh, tube of uh, blood for testing. Yeah. Kind of weird. I heard China is now doing anal you know, swaps for certain cases. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to detect COVID viruses even longer uh, in the system. So apparently COVID viruses somehow uh, um, reside in the feces for quite a long time. So uh, this is where they were planning some anal you know, swap that according to the Global Times, which is interesting. Oh, yeah. I wonder which one is more awkward, like the nose one or the anal one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think Australia, Hong Kong, they are doing sewerage um, 
treatment plants testing, right? They actually test the, the um, yeah, toilet um, stuff and see whether if there's any COVID around uh, certain uh, buildings or whatever. So I think it's kind of weird that COVID exists in the sewage uh, for quite a while. So it has a, like a you new know, like drugs, it, it lasts in your hair for quite a while. Mm-hmm. So I think COVID lasts in our pieces for quite a while. Okay, so let's see. Yep. Ah, one you just joined, King Kui. Okay, Wong Hyun. Uh, sounds, I think, sounds like a Korean friend. Yeah. So, is there anyone new to this meetup? Uh, that you want to have a quick introduction? Hello. Hi, Kiwi. I, I don't recognize the name. So, um, Wong Yong. Have you been allowed? Okay. I'm having dinner now. Yara International. Yeah. Full stack developer. Okay. Machine learning. Cool. Dang, X, you are making me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, King Hui is having dinner now. Okay, I'm going to pour a drink, so I'll get for you as well as that. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, it's quite customary for us to get some uh, drinks here while having the, the meetup. So once... um. Daryl comes back, we can start uh, max our presentation, I think. Okay. So you guys are welcome to join us. Huh? <laughs> Ice water. Hello. Oh, all of them are on mute. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we can uh, start. So, hello, welcome everyone. Uh, so, what you are seeing? So, we are the team that is organizing the um, the monthly uh, free and open source Singapore meetup. Uh, we used to run a physical event every month. Uh, we invite speakers and then uh, after that, uh, we have some discussion and then we're here. So because of COVID, of course, every, everything is going digital. So we have also gone to a virtual meetup. So this is our first one for 2021. So I'm Daryl. Uh, beside me is Zach. Right. Uh, Max will be the one uh, who will be speaking soon. And we have one more organizer, which is Kang. Uh, unfortunately, he can't join us because of work. Okay, so uh, Max, you want to take it from here? All right, let me share my screen. Uh, All right, let me know if you guys can see the screen. Yep, yes, you can. Okay, cool. This one. Okay, um, so quick overview. So my talk is going to be like 10 to 15 minutes, like a very, very short one. There's one open source project I discovered like a year ago and that I um, I really enjoy using and I'm pleasantly surprised how well thought out the whole thing is. And the name is Metabase. Um, it's it's like a, I wouldn't say BI tool, but it's more like a, like a dashboarding query type of solution. Um, meaning that if you have a database with lots of tables in there and they, they all have different connections, and you want to answer a question, right? And most companies, you, <laughs> they just ask the tech team and like, oh, can you do a SQL query, right? And count how many customers did this last month kind of thing. <clears throat> or you have the very, very powerful, very, very expensive tools like, like, um, like I don't know, like there's the Microsoft one, there's like, a, like two dozen others um, <clears throat> where you need like training, right? And, and setting it all up is, is never easy and connecting it to your database. And, um, so yeah, a year ago, I, I got a recommendation for, for this tool, which is um, open source. There is an enterprise version for it. And, um, but 
So the, the MetaBase one is basically like a closure or JVM application with their own web UI, right? So you just install it, point it to your databases, and then you can do all the analytic stuff. What I love about the thing is it's not to update your databases. You just, you just curry it and you just display the different stuffs. You create some dashboards. Um, it integrates with Slack, so you can have like a daily notification if something interesting is happening in your database, this type of stuff, right? And um, where I think it excels is the, the usability is extremely good. I'm, I'm going to show you the, the tool in a second. Um, so if you head over to, to their website, metabase.com slash start, um, you can see, oh, you can, you can buy it, like the, the, the software as a service kind of solution, or you can host it yourself. And, since it's open source, you can just get started. There's a Docker image. Um, there's a jar file you can run. I'm, I'm running the jar file right now. Um, yeah, and it literally takes five minutes to get set up. After you you um, you start the tool, it's going to start on, on your local host 3000. You have to enter your username, and there you go. So this is this is the one that I set up like yesterday um, to play around. I downloaded the COVID data. You can see here's the WHO has one huge CSV file. And this is literally the data that's that's in my in my table now. I just wanted to have something to demonstrate. Um, so MetaBase comes with their own sample data set. You can go in and you can play around with, but it's like a typical, um, yeah, typical application where, where you can you have some products that will be sold, they have they have reviews, that type of stuff. Um, and what I want to show off is the first thing is like the whole user interface. I mean, it looks quite friendly, looks quite nice. You do have like an admin panel with users and you have like Google integration. So you can have your whole company use it by themselves without you having to add every single user, that type of stuff, right? You can, um, yeah, you can, this is like the starting points for your SQL queries. And this is the databases that are added, right? So if you just go to admin and then databases, you can just add a new one and you can choose which one you have, right? It was quite easy to get started. So I have my COVID database that I set up. It's just a uh, CSV file, as I said, that I, um, put into Postgres. And so now I'm just going to go here and it shows me all the tables, right? I have like a population table and the WHO data. And if I click on here, you can see now it looks, it, has, it goes to like the default setting, default view. It's like a table view and I can, I can scroll in here. And now I want to just show you um, the first interesting feature, right? Because for, for most use cases, um, you can get quite far by just clicking these buttons, right? You can see, oh, region. Um, give me distribution or only show me uh, only show me Southeast Asia, right? And now we see only the Southeast Asian values. You see this one here, I think the UI is quite well made, right? So you can play around with this. And now if you come from SQL, you know, like you want to have some group buys, you want to have some where clauses, and they're all hidden in this filter and summarize view here. So it's quite easy to access. Let me just move this over. So now let's say um, I do have a question. Um, what do we want to do? Um, Maybe we want to know, so you can see here, like every, every, every one of these data points has a region, right? So then you can see the continent here and, and you can see the country. So maybe we want to com like compare the average ca new cases of today across the different regions, right? So I just click on summarize and I want to know, let's say the average of uh, cases today. And then I want to group by and I can just choose. So I'm going to just choose region. That's pretty much it. So it already displays me like a better um, distribution. But what I want to do, I want to compare between those, right? Those, so this may be not be the best view. I just click on visualizations. This is all the data uh, visualizations that you get. I just press pi and you get like a pie chart. Okay? I think this is very easy to use, quite cool that, that you can do that stuff. Um, if you come more from the SQL world and you want to have a bit more, this is like the easiest type to use, right? It's the filter and the summarize button. You can have multiple you can summarize by multiple stuff, right? Um, maybe if you want to go like a step step further, there's like an editor view, which, which I just opened here. It's like the second view, and you can join tables, right? So I, I want to join another table. Um, I can I can just choose. Oh, I want to join with the population table where the name of the country is the same as the location, which is also one. Right? And then you can choose which new columns you want. Right? Like, oh, I want to have the total population, and then you want to filter. Um, so this is basically like your SQL editor. And if you want to know what you're doing, you can always click here and it's going to show you the raw SQL query, right? And for power users, you can you can just go here and write your own SQL query. Right? So let's, uh, 
like um, star from WHO data, and it's going to auto complete everything. See, see this one here. Um, yeah, so this is the overview. Um, one feature that I love is the it's it's going to has has some heuristics inside where it knows which type of data should be displayed in which way. So if I go, um, for example, for the WHO data table and just have this um, go here, right, and it just this displays this uh, x-ray this table function, um, which already creates a bunch of interesting graphs for me, right? You can see um, like Europe has 62 countries that are got submitted in here in America 56. Um, yeah, so this this type of stuff is quite easy. You can even say, oh, I only want to compare across, I don't know, the Americas, right? add filter, and then you get, um, yeah, you get all of this for free. It looks a bit better in the prepared sample data set that they have. Let's go uh, reviews. And you can see they have dates in there. They have ratings. They have um, a creation timestamps, which we don't have currently in the COVID data set, right? So you can even sometimes in the products. Um, yeah. They, they have um, here, this one, the, the states, right? So you can have like a world map, which I didn't get to work right before this presentation, but in theory, you can you can like display all this kind of stuff. And if you want, you can just save this as a dashboard, right? I just did it and I click here, see, you can, if I go back to the main page, you can see our analytics, here's like dashboards. Um, and this one, I can edit, I can just press the edit button, right? And I can move stuff around, I can delete stuff. I'm like, um, yeah. And I think it's quite quite powerful to to generate these for your for your business application, right? I can add new stuff, and you even have custom filters in here. And you can choose which um, which field in your query should be affected by this particular filter. So you can combine multiple views in one page. Yeah. And then you can show this. You can even go like like put this on a on a on a standalone screen. I right? put it in night mode, and then I don't know have a cool auto refreshing view of, of your customer data, right? And I, I tend to often get like these um, one off queries from from product. If you're a programmer, you probably know this. Uh, usually your product team comes to you and says like, Oh, I want to know how people actually use this or that feature. Can you can you show a graph? Can you can you um, combine it with this type of data? And I think this metabase gets you one step there of, of showing your of giving your product people um, a tool so they can explore themselves and they can come up with their own questions and even answer basic ones. Um, yeah, so if you want to know more, see the see the GitHub Metabase Metabase. You see it's HGPL, um, so you can you can really play around with it. And I highly encourage you to see the issues and pull requests because there's a lot of stuff happening. So the one like the the whole website six months ago wasn't as powerful as it is now and a lot of stuff is happening and a lot of people contribute more and more new databases. So yeah, I think it's a very interesting project and it's really worth checking it out. And one minor, one last trick that I learned, if you go to Heroku where you can have like free hosting under certain limits, um, it just fits one free Postgres database with like 10,000 rows and one Metabase instance. So if you want to have something you can share with your, I don't know, like friends or colleagues for like a POC, um, you could you could get it hosted for free, right? But this one is not yeah, running for me. Yeah, I think that's it. Do I forget anything? Nope. I think the Slack one is quite cool or email updates, this type of stuff. Um, yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, does anyone have any questions? Or oh. Maybe you are already using this tool. So for the dashboard, when you save the dashboard, um, can you share the link to the dashboard to your yes. colleague? Okay. Yeah, 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 you can see here. This is I, I click on the dashboard. Oh, this one here, and you see dashboard slash one, which is the database ID, and you can just share this with your colleagues. Oh, okay, okay. And if you go to um, to admin and then people, you can invite people. You can click add someone, right? And I could add you and just your email, and you get an invite link. I mean, this won't work because it's a local host. Mm, yeah, right? yeah. But if I host it somewhere, I can I can add new people. Mm. Okay, okay. It's it's very nice indeed. I mean, it's for yeah, yeah. If I if I, if I do not need the frills from Tableau or whatever, yeah, yeah. 
pretty good enough. It's a lot. I think I think for if you compare it with Tableau, Tableau is more powerful. Yeah, sure, yeah. But yeah. a lot harder to use. And I think this one fits nicely on the, you know, you get like 80% of the power, but only 20% mm. of the complexity. So mm. it has like a very nice ratio on how simple it is to use, right? So people just go in here and just click ask a question and they're like, oh, you want a simple custom or do you actually know SQL? You can choose. Right? And then you get to exactly the view that I just showed you, right? Which is this one here. Yeah. And then you can you can play around with this one, these two buttons. And you get quite far. Yeah. Or even the the this one here, right? You're like, oh, give me the distribution, right? And just get here. You can click on this one and then you're like, oh, X-ray compared to the rest. And then you can you have like this uh, all these charts like are generated so you can do it. Yeah, stuff, right? it's very nice that the, all the context is there. You can just drill in deeper and deeper and. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, I just love this thing for like the exploration phase, then putting something on a dashboard and then people can just go and. Uh, yeah, make up their own mind. Otherwise, usually product asks you like ten questions in a row, right? Every time you answer one question, they come up with two or three more. Mm. So this way they can explore themselves. Yeah, this this way you allow the end users to do their own self service and figure mm. things out. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. These are all the parameters. I think all the columns of the database is is, is really exposed, so it's a uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't you don't need another tool for the query part, and if you really need an engineer, they can still go in here and write the SQL. Okay, so yeah, I think it's quite it's a, it's a good addition to whatever stack most people have. Which is usually like Excel exports, like this type of stuff. No? Yeah, looks looks very very good. Yeah, it's like I mean, compared to the old days, we use Java and EJBs and things that do <laughs> yes. bubble up something like this. Oh my goodness, it's so much <laughs> better. And it's, I mean, I think I, you are running on your laptop, right? It, it's really very spiffy and yeah, quick. Yeah. yeah. You need around six seven hundred megabytes, I think. Hmm. And that's it. And, and it, it has their own database to store all the all the this one here, right? And you can use SQLite locally. But if you want to deploy to the cloud, you need one one free Postgres uh, mm. or something like this, right? To to mm. to so it will revive it, it will survive a restart. Otherwise, if you restart, all your users are gone. I, I believe the database they support more than Postgres, right? Yeah, yeah they, they support a lot. If you one, know, one more chunk of it. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if, you, if you see here, there's like a huge, like, quite nice, there's like MongoDB Ooh. and H2 and whatever. Snowflake. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Snowflake uh, over dinner just now. <laughs> nice. Oh, they, oh, yeah. Redshift, oh. Snowflake. Oh, I, I saw something in Google Analytics. So like, I can actually use yeah, this yeah. for Google Analytics. So, okay. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's there's no more questions. Yep. Any anyone, uh, anyone else wants to share some experience or maybe you are familiar with some similar similar kind of products. Right, maybe one more thing that the documentation is quite is quite good as well. So if you have any. But is there any um, other open source uh, projects that is similar to MetaBase? I don't know, probably, but I haven't found any that are yeah, quite in this quite in the same niche as this one. Right? Yeah, it's, mm. I find it's very polished already. Uh, it mm. looks fantastic. I mean, there's a there's a company behind it, right? So they have the premium offering. Um, but it's quite an interesting um, approach that you have these uh, open source projects or like highly polished, but have a premium offering at the same the same time. Mm. Cool. All right. Cool. Okay, so I guess if there's no other question, then uh, shall we move to the next part, which is uh, me. So uh, actually, I so what I'm gonna show you is actually uh, gonna be the next cloud twenty. So before I start, anyone else using next cloud, or you have tried it in the past? Oh, oh mute! I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so actually, um, uh, I think probably Max and I, we met uh, the founder of uh, Nextcloud, uh, I think about three years ago during the Force Asia. So I, he actually came down. So I tried out Nextcloud during that time. Uh, at the time, I think it was still quite simple. And when we do uh, file syncing, uh, when it's a large file, actually the performance is still very slow. So uh, come. Uh, 2021, I decided uh, about two weeks ago. So I decided to try out the latest uh, Nextcloud 20 to check out what it's like. Okay. 
Okay, so I actually have a slide. Okay, let me try to share. Just a second. I'm going to try to share my browser screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Okay, so this is actually a running next cloud 20. And uh, what you're getting here is that uh, this is actually a dash that you can sort of like, you can actually customize. Uh, you can decide what widgets and one of, one of the big change is that uh, there is now a next cloud app store. Uh, I'll show you more of that uh, in a while. And uh, basically you can also customize the background image. Okay, so what I'll do is actually I'm at, I did the PowerPoint here, the slides. So as you can see, we you can actually uh, open up. Okay, so I'm using a demo so server, which I'll explain in the last time. So you see that they have watermark demo all over. Okay, so what is Nextcloud? Nextcloud, I think started uh, in the very uh, early days as uh, a drop-in open source replacement for uh, Dropbox. Uh, but it has actually evolved and added more collaboration type features and even uh, web conferencing features. So that's what they, they said. Uh, most deployed on-premise file share and collaboration platform. And of course, it's free and open source. Okay, so I'll just explain. Let me blow up the screen so you can see better. So I'm actually doing everything within Nextcloud. Okay, so what do I so how do I uh, do this installation? So Nextcloud is actually pretty much a uh, quite standard LAMP stack, uh, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So uh, in my office, I actually uh, running an old server uh, with uh, running the VMware quite old ES XI 6.5. Uh, I tried to upgrade, but actually I have a lot of issues because the hardware is so old. So there's a lot of uh, issues, but uh, there's actually some hack to allow me to install the latest Ubuntu 20.10. So for my v virtual machine, I configured with uh, four CPU, eight gigabyte and uh, 500 gigabyte of uh, storage. Okay. Now with this, uh, uh, this new version of Ubuntu, so actually the, the, the straight most the easiest way to install is actually via Ubuntu Snap. So I, I'm not sure if anyone has used uh, Snap before. You can come and monitor if there's any hmm. chat. So so actually I provided the link. So uh, I will share this uh, power, this this slide uh, later on. So after you install, which is actually just one single command, you can install uh, this uh, next cloud on a brand new Ubuntu machine. And then the next thing you uh, there's also a script for you to install the SSL, uh, let's and trip. And then my last thing just to get it working is to map it to a, a subdomain and do some port forwarding because uh, it's running in my office server. Okay. So what I what what have I found so far? So of course, I uh, if you are very concerned about uh, security and control then this, this one will allow you to self-host your file storage and sharing. Uh, there's also a group collab collab collaboration features, which I can show you later. So basically, uh, you, you just within a team or corporate or department, uh, you can, it's very easy to share files and also communicate. Now, the third thing, I'm not sure whether they added it because of COVID, but it's very nice. Uh, there's an integrated uh, web RTC. You can do uh, messaging and uh, uh, video chat, voice chat as well. Okay. Uh, then the other thing is, of course, it's nice to have uh, mobile apps so for iOS and Android clients. Uh, there's an app store, which and there's so many apps there which I haven't even had chance to uh, go through all of them. And of course, the best part is free and open source. Okay. Now, of course, being an open source project, it cannot be without issues. So there are a few things that I found out during this whole uh, installation process. So the first thing is that, uh, of course, uh, because I map it to my subdomain, so you have to go into the configuration 
and uh, add a trusted domain to it. That's actually quite straightforward enough. Now, the second issue which I found is that uh, I was trying to install the next cloud talk, which is actually not such a big file. It's only about 70 over megabyte, I think. But actually, the download speed is super slow from the App Store. So uh, basically, it just time out. So I had to resort to uh, manually in, uh, downloading the basically the, uh, uh, the app package. And then you basically, you put it in that location. So the way Snap works, Snap is actually a read-only read file system. So you cannot modify anything. But good thing is that actually there is a writable and the next file will actually look for extra apps in this, in this location. So basically you just have to download the app Set, uh, separately off, uh, and then you just put it there, unzip it and put it there and uh, they will be able to find the app. Okay, so this is one thing that you have to take note. I'm sure when, if it's Europe, maybe the download speed is okay, but for some reason, the speed is unbearable. unbearable, uh, unbearable. So the third thing is that uh, using the talk because uh, if behind firewall, uh, they cannot find the local IP. So what you need to do is to install a, a turn server. So I, I will not go into too much about the turn server, but anyway, there are very clear instructions on how to set up the turn server. So the turn server is like a PABX exchange. Okay. Uh, so actually what I did was to uh, install the turn server on the same uh, next cloud server as well. And that, and then I'm able to use the conferencing feature, video conference and all that, WebRTC. So the next thing is that if you want to basically open up uh, Office documents on the uh, within uh, Nextcloud, you need to set up another server, which is called uh, Collabora, and it's probably uh, very similar to a uh, LibreOffice. So you need to set up a, your own server again. Uh, but I kind of cheated because I'm just basically doing a, 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 a evaluation of this. So, uh, so you can point point to uh, another demo server, which was what happened just now, and it's a uh, it's displaying this. So basically, it sends your document to the server and then come back again. <laughs> so if you are concerned about security, you you don't do this approach. Okay, you have to set up your own server, your own. Uh, um, basically office document server, okay? Uh, next thing I found out was that uh, if you are working on the, in a browser, sometimes I don't get the notification. So what to, what you can do is to install the next cloud uh, Windows desktop app, which is actually a very simple app, but then uh, you get a nice notification when someone sent you a message, okay? Lastly, uh, in, for the Android, I, I think initially uh, I was confused. So there's actually a separate app for the next cloud uh, file sync and the next cloud uh, talk client. So just be aware they are like two different apps. Okay, so I'm gonna try to demo. Let's see here. Demo time. Just a second. Oh, it's actually here. It's actually here. Okay. One second. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yep. I see. Okay. So if you can see the screen, okay. Uh, basically, this is the dash. And this is the files. Okay. So these are all the files uh, uh, that we are actually using for this. So you can basically create folders and then you can decide who do you want to share to. I think there's a share. Oh, yeah. this is actually shared by you. Yeah. So next slide is like a bit like uh, Dropbox plus collaboration with chat. I think there's a lot of other modules which you can uh, add uh, into the setup so that, I mean, 
pretty much those that you do not need, you don't install, right? So it make it a, a lot more customizable and just uh, pick what you need. And if you need it later on, let's say you need to have a chat later on, you can just plug it in. So this is uh, pretty uh, pretty good and lightweight. So it can be very specific to your, as, um, your requirements and you do not need to install the whole uh, uh, kitchen sink in order for it, for it to run, yeah. So here you can see that actually uh, someone shared, my, my intern shared a Word document and uh, you can actually pretty much do a quick preview at least if the formatting is not too complicated. Okay, I'm gonna close. Okay, so that's how it works. Of course, you can share photos and uh, I will just skip to the talk. So talk is actually the uh, messaging. So you can see that uh, I have actually, uh, there's also, you can do group messaging. It was a group, but I, uh, okay. And this is actually with another user. And uh, the nice thing is that you can actually send, well, all the doc, when, when you send documents in, in the uh, chat, you actually automatically go into a, a folder inside the file section. So you never lose things. Okay, and basically you see the top right, I can actually start the call, but I'm not sure I'm gonna start it now. So basically you don't have to uh, jump out of Nextcloud in the, or go to something like Zoom or Microsoft Teams, uh, basically to start a call. So this is like Dropbox yeah. plus yeah. Uh, Slack or something. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Well, actually, so this <laughs> is the context where basically you can add all the users uh, you want. And then, uh, okay, this is, that is a, is a Trello like Kanban. Wow. Which I haven't used yet. So, so you can have bots as well. Add cards. And this <laughs> Trello. <laughs> yeah. So I pretty much <laughs> all the features. But I'll 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 show you the admin. So basically, this is the admin screen uh, on the right because I'm an admin user. So basically, this is the part where you go to install additional apps. Oh, it's very slow. Okay, it's more slightly because I'm streaming. <laughs> okay, so these are all the apps that I have installed. Okay, and you, this is actually the app store and they're organized by categories on the left. Come on, it's kind of slow. Okay, yeah, it's there. So for example, dashboard games as well. <laughs> I don't know why you want to put games. Uh, so this, this is where uh, I was supposed to install the talk, but then as I was saying that the download is so slow, so it actually uh, fails. So well, there are so many apps now. Okay. So that's basically it in a nutshell. And this is where you add users. Okay, and then when you add user, of course, then you can assign them to uh, groups. And then you can just uh, share uh, documents within the group itself. Okay, this is basically uh, in a nutshell, uh, next cloud. Does anyone have any questions or would like me to to show you anything. You're going so quiet. <laughs> yeah, I think next is a very good solution uh, for a small and medium sized business itself. So um, I have friends who runs uh, restaurants and coffee chains, right? So it's like individual uh, coffee location. They will have a folder and dump all the stuff there. And you have an organization uh, org chart and in, in different uh, employees can only access their, their folder and share all sorts of things and menus and things like that. So I, I think that this one is a very good uh, solution. Uh, pretty neat because you can install on your own hardware. So um, and I, just like we were chatting, if you are using Synology and things like that, it's also, uh, uh, you can also set up Nextcloud into Synology, uh, which is good. So you can choose to install your own hardware or you can buy a NAS and drop in Next Nextcloud. Um, and just run run from there. So this is where I think it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility. So let's say if you're good enough to run your own server, set up own storage, well, go ahead, right? So if not, you can just get a NAS and uh, drop in uh, Nextcloud, which is also pretty good. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, you can 
the NAS will handle all the rate uh, striping and performance and, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty good. Yeah. So actually for co collaboration, you can do a workflow, basically a, a document flow to be approved by who and who or, you know, uh, your supervisor and all that. So that part, I actually have, haven't even had time to go into it. So it, there's so much, uh, there's actually so many features uh, that maybe you guys uh, might find interesting and uh, try to exploit. Okay, so... Anyone, any question? No? Any questions? But it, but it looks very, very cool. I like... I like the plugins page. So you can actually just click and it's going to install yeah. everything for yourself, right? Well, that's, nice. that's the problem I'm facing. Probably the net, the, the network speed to 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 their, their host is not fast enough. So of course, I think there were some fixes to say, ah, oh, better go in there to change the PHP configuration, increase the timeout and all that. I said, oh. It was super slow, so I end up. So you 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 probably uh might have to go go and do manual um uh, manual installation. So what you can do is uh, you can just go to the GitHub, the next cloud GitHub. So all the apps are actually there as well. You can download the uh, app bundle and just throw it inside the uh, extra apps, and it will it will actually show up. I like that the fact that next cloud comes with the app itself. So there's two apps. Right? One is more for the storage, the other one is more for the chat. So the storage app is very similar to the Dropbox app, right? So I, I think similarly, if you're running a business, uh, a lot of times, if you notice, when you finish your job, you see the workers will take photograph of, hey, I've done this, uh, I've, I, I fill up the pothole and things like this. I take a photo, there's evidence and things like that. And it automatically uh, stores into the next cloud and, and off it goes. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, pretty pretty cool that it has an app and it makes it a lot easier for end users uh, who do, do not need to have a yeah. browser access to to just uh, upload stuff, share stuff, yeah. and collaborate. Well, it looks like it can replace uh, Dropbox, uh, Slack, Trello, Zoom, <laughs> Trello. <laughs> yeah. So so all you want, <laughs> at least from what I see so far. So promising, promising. Yep. Yep. Okay, so uh, you want me to jump to the okay. news? Yeah, so I'll stop. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, just a short uh, update in terms of the uh, open source uh, news and, and so forth. Uh, hopefully it'll be in interesting uh, to everyone. At least it's interesting to me, right? I think uh, one of the big uh, hoo-ha in the news was uh, with uh, Elasticsearch that changed the licensing um, um, to make it not so easy to, to uh, really customize and, and, and stuff like that. But then it's dual license, you, so you can uh, pick and choose. But if you read deeper into the whole story, right? So um, actually, they, uh, they are pretty pissed off with AWS, which uses uh, Elasticsearch and provide Elasticsearch as a service. and Commercially, they didn't pay Elasticsearch, and AWS said, that, "Hey, Elasticsearch is our buddy. We we uh we are very happy to collaborate with Elasticsearch." And actually, that's not really that true, right? So Elasticsearch, uh, for commercial reasons, they are a company, right? So they decided to change the licensing term and hopefully force AWS to pay licensing, right? So again, you know, when you deal with an eight hundred pound gorilla like AWS, AWS say. Screw you, I'm going to fuck uh, Elasticsearch and this is uh, what is uh, happening at the moment. So the battle is still ongoing. I'm not too sure uh, who will win up because AWS basically provide it as a service and they charge for the service. They, didn't, like, they won't charge for Elasticsearch and since they were forking the code, right, they, going down the road, they may not even uh, bother to pay anything to Elasticsearch. So um, this is where uh, this is what it goes right. So it's very similar to you know the previous uh meetup we talked about CentOS and Red Hat and things like that. So in the end, uh, even though it's open source, it's still a commercial company. Like Red Hat is bought over by IBM. In the end, uh, they need to make some commercial sense to justify for the resources. Yes, open source. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of 
coders and things like that, but everyone still need to eat, right? So uh, this is where it goes. So keep an eye out on Elasticsearch. Um, yep, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Because if AWS continues to slowly choke off and kill off open source projects and other companies, right? It's not going to be good for the whole uh, ecosystem itself. Okay, wait, why can we jump so fast? Okay, next one is uh, Microsoft. So now uh, they say, hey, it's time for all firms to embrace um, open source, right? So interestingly, now Microsoft Azure, they claim that, hey, there's more Linux servers running on Azure than Windows Server, which is quite true, right? Because um, if Microsoft is not going to run their own services in Azure, who is going to run? I mean, Amazon is not going to run Windows or SQL Server or SharePoint, right? But um, Microsoft is really tilting more towards a lot more to the open source, source uh, side of things. So if you attended um, any of your Kubernetes uh, webinar, the technical webinars, you'll be quite surprised that um, Microsoft Azure literally like support everything that Kubernetes throw, uh, is releasing, uh, all the dockers and every, everything else management. So this is where they really go all out to support open source because they know that, hey, it's not just about Windows software, right? If they don't support open source open-heartedly, right? Uh, they're gonna, uh, competitors will come in and take over the customers, right? So they have literally no choice but to go about uh, doing it. And the next thing is that if, if you follow, AWS is also there to try and choke off and kill off whatever uh, existing Microsoft customers and bring over to AWS. So they actually have this thing called porting assistant for .NET. The idea is that if you have a legacy .NET framework next to that, they will, you can run this assistant and they will tell you, hey, uh, which part of a code that need to change to move to .NET Core. So the, the reason is because .NET Core can run on Linux. And this is where you can shift lock, start and barrel. Uh, even though you're on .NET, you can shift uh, lock, start and barrel into .NET Core on AWS. So this is an uh, interesting turn of things, right? Because, um, of course, AWS is eyeing all these uh, Microsoft customers, especially legacy customers that has lots of uh, .NET uh, application and things like that. And Microsoft, frankly, also have no choice but to come up with a .NET core to make it more open source, more open friendly. And the main thing I noticed from what I can see is these containers. So uh, classical .NET application or even Windows application, right? even on server mode, you cannot run inside a container per se. It's not designed for that. So this is where they came up with .NET Core and .NET Core is um, easily uh, put into a container. And this is where they need to go this way in order to use Kubernetes, right? So if not, customers again, leave, leave a shift and go to competitors like AWS. So this is an interesting thing and do, do keep an eye out to see uh, whether this porting assistant for .NET is going to be a success for AWS in terms of get, getting market, market share for, for Microsoft or whatever, right? So this is an interesting thing. Um, the next news is more on the security one. So this one is uh, sudo, which is a Linux command. So this uh, company called security company called Qualys um, actually have a proof of concept uh, demo that basically do a buffer over load and overflow and pop up basically force sudo uh, and give you a root uh, shell right so this is uh, interesting because the proof of concept is uh, recorded on and is shown to be working and it affects all the sudo um, commands on all linux distribution it is like massive uh, bug that wasn't solved i think apparently like 10 years old or something like that so again uh, this proof of concept proof that it can be ex exploited so um, if you're running um, sudo, using sudo on a production server, better uh, patch it up. Okay, so um, next one is more of a nice read, right? So if you are old school, if you know what is the uh, uh, WRT uh, for 45G, you know that it's a, a router, Linksys router, which uh, thanks to a happy mistake, um, a lot of the hackers and makers uh, can um, customize the firmware and make this router very, very uh, customizable to do all sorts of uh, crazy things. So this is a long article. So it's just um, um, helps to bring you back to the, the reason why makers is um, 
when you allow your product to be customized, it actually became, it makes the Linksys router become such a de facto standard um, that everyone is used, right? But if you really make it so proprietary, well, good luck to you. No one's going to yes. support that much. The DD, the BRT, yeah, 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 yeah. Open, DRT, those. Yeah. So, so if you are old school and you remember this uh, Linksys router, this yeah. is a long article. You can uh, take a look at it and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yes, last time I used to hack all, all these uh, routers to do uh, fun, funny things, uh, to segment or do things that is not supposed to be done. Yeah, so, yep. So this is just my, oh, one more. Yeah, so miscellaneous, I put this under miscellaneous is uh, IPFS uh, support for Brave. Um, the idea is that uh, with IPFS, you can browse a website without calling the, the, the actual server that was previously hosting the contents, right? So this one is considered like, like the interplanetary file system. Uh, it's, it's a good um, idea, but um, on the flip side of things, I'm not too sure, um, let's say if you have documents or contents that you want to be forgotten, right, in Euro and in European uh, countries especially. How do you go about deleting certain contents uh, that you want to be deleted and don't want to be shared forever, right? So, well, um, it's, it's just pros and cons. It's a nice uh, idea for uh, Brave to support IPFS, but um, let's see how it goes. It's, 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 it's a pretty niche uh, support for IPFS, uh, especially if you are uh, those that is uh, uh, pro free speech and wants to avoid censorship and blah, 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 right? So IPFS is an interesting uh, protocol um, that is uh, designed for, for this uh, purpose. So um, I think that's all for what I have. Yeah, yeah thanks. Can, can we hear yep. from, from, from uh, those, those of you that are in the call? Hello, you want to unmute? Yeah, you can unmute yourself <laughs> and... Um, Maybe you want to say something. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Any comments, uh, like, feedback? Uh, like feedback, like what, what do you all hope to see? Or what do you all hope to get out of this? Or maybe even share what kind of open source technology you are using currently? Wow, okay. <laughs> Very quiet crowd. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's a long day now. It's uh, <laughs> eight fifty-five, almost nine. Yeah. So, any feedback? Uh, any things that you want to cover <laughs> for next week? <laughs> next month. Next month, right? Next month. Sorry. Actually, I have I I have one other open source project that's quite interesting. So I don't know whether you guys have heard of uh, Moonlight. Have you all heard of Moonlight? Moonlight, the uh, open source .NET framework. No, no. It's uh, Moonlight. It's a uh, game. Has, has anyone heard of Moonlight? No. no okay, no. let me show. Let me show. This is not in a gender. I just happened to thought of uh, maybe sharing. Is anyone sharing the chat? Yeah, Wait, I, 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 I can. I can share the screen. Okay. Oh, then. Oh, .NET yeah. framework is Moon. No, not Moonlight. Sorry. Yeah, can you all see? Yes. Okay. So, so what happened is that, uh, so NVIDIA, this is only for NVIDIA card holders, uh, people who owns NVIDIA card. Huh? So basically for the NVIDIA uh, GPU, they have this game stream, okay? So initially they, they developed this to work only for the Shield TV the protocol, which means you can stream from uh, NVIDIA GPU. Okay, basically I think it does real time video transcoding and send the game uh, picture graphics to a client over the network. So game streaming. So what happened is that of course, open source community, very smart. Uh, basically they, they implemented this into open source, which means now you can actually do NVIDIA game streaming to any device. For example, what I did was I have a very cheap, those $100 uh, Android TV box in my living room. So basically for my PC, running the, um, the NVIDIA uh, game experience client, game streaming client, you can pair up with my Android TV box running Moonlight. 
climb. And then I, I'm able to basically play all the AAA PC game on my TV using a cheap <laughs> Android TV box. And I also tried it on my, on my Android phone, uh, so it works. And that's actually, there's actually a way for you to uh, run it over the internet as well. So pretty much uh, that's, that is the basis of how uh, Google Stadia works. This, so you can see here is running your own server and uh, multiple client and it's completely open source. And you see, it actually you can run on your Mac also. Chrome OS, uh, Android, uh, iOS, and all that. So actually, uh, yeah, I've been playing it now on the, my big screen TV. So that's something I, uh, I thought is probably interesting to share. If you have a NVIDIA card though. <laughs> if you don't have a NVIDIA card, actually uh, Steam, uh, has something similar, some kind of similar feature, but I think the NVIDIA one is really optimized to stream very good quality and low latency. So, okay, thought I should share this with you if you guys are into this. So your own Google Stadium. And that one is very cool. <clears throat> okay. Nice, we good. I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's very interesting. So you you. You, you, you make your investment already on your PC. <laughs> yeah. uh, of yeah. course, I think uh, there's also a news that Amazon is also getting into the game streaming. So uh, the Amazon solution is called uh, Luna. Can you see? The Luna. Oh, my. Yeah. Amazon is into everything, man. Everything. So uh, it's not available in Singapore yet. So I think they have a two plan. So five ninety nine, I think they give you some simple game, but not not too bad game. They have Greek Metro Exodus Control five ninety nine a month, and you can play, basically streaming to all your devices, and the Ubisoft one okay a bit more expensive. Uh, Stadia is also not available in Singapore yet, so uh, curious how it will look. I tried playing some of the China one, but cannot work because the, the network is just too slow from China mm. streaming. All the, the latency was like 289, 80 seconds, mm. milliseconds. So cannot. Okay, so just joining. Anyone else want to say some last words? If not, feel free to drop us a note like if you want to uh, speak at the next one. Uh, or if there's something that you 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 would like us to uh, to uh, cover, actually I was thinking of uh, finding someone to talk about Blender because Blender has actually gotten quite far. Yeah, and the 3D the, modeling yeah, thing, right? Three D yeah. modeling. I was thinking of getting a Blender expert to come uh, talk about Blender. Hmm. That might be quite interesting as well. Yeah, Blender. Let me ping my other channels to see whether. Yeah, I might. So, so if you guys know of anyone uh, who can come and uh, share some uh, expert knowledge on open source, please uh, drop us a message. Okay. If not, all right. I know it's a long day for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you for good. coming. Yep. All right. See Thank you. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.